Hey loves and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining us tonight for a, another what's for dinner. Tonight we're making another version of one pot pasta. We like one pot pasta because it's easy to make and it's full of a lot of goodness. So literally you get your vegetables, your starch, all of it in one little um, pot, which is why it's called one pot pasta. Um, again, the recipe that we got this from will be in the description box. My note to whoever makes this, or if you guys decide to make this, is definitely season it to taste. You want to make sure you add the seasonings that you need to add to it that will give you all the flavor you're looking for in it. Um, otherwise, it may be a little bland for you, so just taste as you go so you know. But, all right, here we go. Let's get cooking. So the ingredients for tonight's meal, we've got a red bell pepper, a yellow onion, two, du two zucchinis, two zucchinis and we've got about um a package one package of uh, baby bell mushrooms i'm going to take and cut all these up so we've got your zucchini your bell peppers your onions and your mushrooms i diced the zucchini the bell peppers and onions and just sliced up the mushrooms um along with that we're going to flavor it up with a little bit of minced garlic um add some diced tomatoes to the pot I mean, this is just tomatoes in their um, own tomato juice, a little black pepper, of course, um, a little bit of salt to give it some flavor. I'm going to saute the veggies up in our favorite avocado oil. Add in a little bit of, got the drop teas, ground thyme, some uh, crushed red peppers, and then we also have some oregano and a little bit of basil. Still got the drop seeds today, guys. Don't know what the heck is going on, but a little basil is going to go in there. And then, of course, we're going to add in some veggie broth to help boil the noodles. And then these are the noodles we're using. Otini, I believe it's pronounced. Um, you'll notice later I made an error in my cooking, but I fix it and it still turns out pretty good. But these are the stars of the show that will go in along with some kale to give us um, some more added flavor and, and volume to the food. So I'm going to get this pot on the stove and get it heated up a little bit before I add my oil. So I'm going to just heat the pot itself because I find that it does better versus me putting the oil in first and then heating the pot. Um, I feel like my oil burns faster. So I heat the pot first, then pour my oil in. And again, doesn't take a whole lot to saute up these veggies, just enough to where we can get it all going. So first thing first, I'm going to add in the minced garlic. Again, the recipe will be somewhere in the description box for you. So that way you're able to um, follow it the way you follow it. But like I say in the beginning, make sure you flavor it the way you want to flavor it so it tastes good to you. Now I've got the onions in and I'm going to go get those sauteed down. That I, we cook the onions and the uh, bell, bell peppers, <laughs> onions and mushrooms first, so that way um, we can first get the, the garlic taste to where it's not so pungent and so strong. So you cook it down so it's not as very as powerful when you're eating it. And then for the onions, they take a little longer than the other vegetables to soften. So that's why we tend to put those in first and go ahead and cook those up and get them sauteed down. So I'm just, you know, incorporating them in the oil, ensuring that all the onions get cooked, you know, mixing them around, making sure they're good to go um, before I start to add in the other vegetables. So that usually takes about maybe three, four minutes to cook the onions and the, I keep wanting to call it bell peppers, the onions and the garlic down. Um, now I'm going to add in the seasonings. We've got the basil, the oregano, the thyme, got the salt the pepper, and a little bit of um, crushed red peppers. Okay, so the recipe calls for more than um, this when it comes to the crushed red peppers, but we found it to be too spicy for us, so we just opted to go with just a little bit less. Literally, all I'm going to do is just pour this into this pot and um, combine it with the onions, the oil, and the garlic that's in there. And then you'll see as we keep cooking how the other vegetables will absorb and grab those flavors off of the onions and um, the garlic. 
Um, but the meal was so delicious. Oh my gosh. So if you make it, definitely tell me about it or something. Let me know how it turns out for you because we love it. This is, again, not the first time we've made it, but we love it. So now we're going to go in and add in our mushrooms, uh, red bell peppers, and zucchini to the mix. So we got our mushrooms first. Get those in, incorporate them. But as you can see, as we're incorporating these mushrooms in, they're grabbing onto the flavor. You'll start to see the other vegetables um, start to have the hint of the oregano and basil and thyme on them. And that's because they're absorbing and attaching to the flavor. Next, we added in the zucchini. Um, both the mushroom and the zucchini, <laughs> tongue tied today, both the mushroom and the zucchini have water contents in them. So I'm not worried about them scorching as they're cooking because they're going to produce their own moisture to help and aid in the cooking process. All right. Now we've got the red bell peppers added into the mix. I'm just going to stir and combine this all together. Again, ensure that all the vegetables have the flavoring that was put in there um, on them, that they're evenly coated and very distributed throughout the pot. Again, we didn't need a whole lot of um, avocado oil because the mushroom and the zucchini are going to produce some moisture, which is going to help with the cooking process. So it doesn't take a lot. As you see here, I haven't added anything else to it. They literally are making their own moisture and allowing the food to cook down. Um, the zucchini will soften as you cook it because it has a uh, water, high water content. Now I'm going to add in the rotini. Here's where I made the mistake. I was thinking, okay, five cups of rotini, that means two boxes because I was reading outside the box. No, 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 no. It didn't mean that. I, I should have looked at the grams on the recipe and not the actual cups piece of it and looked at the ounces on the box. Didn't do that. Um, so I'm going to fix that later. So here I'm going to add in the veggie broth. I didn't go with any of the, the no chicken um, veggie broth that I do this time around. I just went with straight veggie broth. I'm sure if I would have went with that, would, that would have added some more flavor as well, but I didn't. Now we're going to add in those diced tomatoes. And you're going to see where my issue is here just a second because when I add in the tomatoes, I have two boxes of rotini. And again, I hope I'm saying it right. Don't know, but you know, I try. And I only have that amount of veggie broth. You can see there's not enough moisture in this pot to cover the noodles properly. And in order for the noodles to cook down like they should, they have to be covered properly. So I go back in and I actually add in just a little bit more veggie broth and some water to help cover the noodles because if not, then they're not going to cook. Um, and then we won't have a flavorful meal because it won't cook. So this did take a little bit longer and it made a whole lot more than we're used to. That just means we'll have more yumminess to eat on for days and days to come. So get those, we're going to get those noodles all underneath the water because we want them to boil. We want them to soften. We don't want hard and crunchy noodles. So as we get those in and the pot gets to go, I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit and sorry for the steam, but hey, you guys know it's cooking in here. This kitchen is hot. Like we bet they say, if you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen. Just kidding. All right. So um, I turn the heat up on the eye so that way it can start to boil the noodles for me. And what's going to happen is even though I had to add a lot more moisture because we have so many noodles in there. It's going to absorb that moisture and it won't be like soup. It will be pasta once it's all said and done. Um, I do go back in, even though you saw me add those seasonings and add in a little bit of stevia, um, some nutritional yeast, a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper. And then also I added in a little bit of Italian seasoning to pump up the flavor. Um, now I go in and add my kale. You guys know I'm one hand motioning this to make sure I cook it. So, of course, I'm going to spill some stuff. But, hey, that's what happens in the kitchen. I'm going to invest in me a cell phone tripod or a camera tripod so that way I can just cook with both hands when I'm filming for you guys. But here I am. I'm going to stir in this kale and get it um, evenly distributed throughout the pot. Sorry, again, the steam is taking over this video. 
Um, but we stir the kale in and get it in. And then I take it off of the eye that it's on to allow it to just simmer and cook down so it can soften up just a little bit more. That way we're able to eat it. While that's doing that, I'm going to make my own recipe of garlic bread. I'm going to use a little bit of vegan butter, a smidge of garlic salt, a lot of garlic powder, and some parsley, and make some garlic toast. So in the bowl, I'm going to take maybe about a tablespoon of uh, vegan butter. Um, and then I'm going to add in just, like I said, just a smidge, smidge, smidge of garlic salt to this mixture. And... Um, a bunch of garlic powder. The reason for the garlic powder is because I want to make sure it tastes like garlic bread, not just butter bread. So then we add in, like I said, the garlic salt to help pull the flavor up just a little bit. It won't be too salty because I don't put a whole lot in there because I know if I do, it will be too strong. And then just some parsley flakes. Honestly, these are just aesthetics to give it a good look and make it look like garlic bread. All I do here is just take and mash it together. Now, you usually I would take it and put it in a microwave and melt it down, but I found that that makes the bread a little too soggy. So I learned that I can just mash the butter up in the bowl and mix it together that way, combining all the ingredients, and then take and spread it on the bread. That way, it's just like I did regular toast in the oven. Um, like for those of you who cook their bread in the oven and not in a toaster, you know that the back side of the bread is not going to be um, covered. So you can choose to butter the back of the bread and the leg cook, but it's up to you. This is the bread that we're going to use. We're going to use potato bread. Um, we um, generally freeze our bread and then bring out packs as we need them. Um, so this bread was a bigger piece of bread than normal bread. So it's like that wide pan bread. It makes for a very good garlic toast. I'm going to take and spread the whole top part of this bread as much as I can with the butter spread and get it evenly distributed over all three slices of toast. I'm not having it tight, but they are. And then I'm going to pop that in the oven. Now, in the oven, I'm going to set the temperature to broil because that's how we toast bread in the oven. It's not a baking motion. It's going to be on broil. And you have to, I repeat, have to watch that bread or you're going to burn your toast. So we leave it in there for maybe a few minutes. And this is what it looks like. Tell me it doesn't look good. Tell me it doesn't. You be lying. It's okay. All right. So now I'm going to get some bowls made up for the family. Um, Lauren wants the green bowl. So we're going to give her the green bowl. And then we'll use the other two bowls. So look at this. I told you, even though it had a lot of moisture in it, you once you take it and allow it to sit, the noodles absorb the rest of the moisture and it doesn't look soupy anymore. It's literally good cooked, nice, good, yummy pasta. I'm going to top this off with a little bit of vegan Parmesan cheese. We use this brand here, Follow Your Heart. You can find it in some grocery stores have it. Um, I know if you have a Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, you can find it there. So we just sprinkle a little bit on top just to give it a little bit more yummy goodness. Uh, it's it's really good, I promise. And then I'm going <laughs> to attempt to cut this toast in half with my butter knife in one hand. Should have really got a regular knife, but I just want to show you guys like that the bread actually toasts up in the oven. And it's not like mushy because... I put butter on it. It just literally toasted like a normal piece of toast with toast. And we're going to go and give it a try. Look at it, y'all. Does it look good? Let's see what Lauren has to say. Yeah. All right, love. So Lauren is going to taste this for us and let us know how it tastes. Because you guys know she's our ultimate taste tester. You are. You know you are. <laughs> um, and she will let you know your thoughts. You know. We hope it's good. It is very hot, as my husband just found out. <laughs> so um Lauren's gonna taste it and let us know her thoughts yes please blow why are you flipping the bread around that's what, that's what you need. Right. say hey first hi hi, hi. <laughs> all right give it a will will give it a whirl <laughs> tell me what you think Oh, yep. 
Yeah, yeah, I know them eyes, right? The eyes tell it when it's good. I don't know. Do I get a 10? Do I get an 8? A 4? Oh, okay. She ain't said nothing. So I guess it's speechless. Can you taste my bread I made? Right, right. Sorry. Okay. Well, yeah, they know that because it's cooked <laughs> in the oven. That happens. But it tastes the bread. All right, I guess that's a done deal. Ten out of ten for both of them. Ten out of ten well, for both of them. For the bread, it's a hundred. Oh, not a hundred out of ten. Well, there you have it. Lauren gives it a hundred out of ten, ten out of ten for both of them, whatever you want to call it. She gave it. So, thank you guys so much for watching and joining us again for what's for dinner. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, look at myself. Been in the kitchen working hard, y'all. Working hard. <laughs> Um, you guys can tell, look at this summertime still, almost summertime because it's daylight and it's dinner time. So confusing. But anywho, off that soapbox. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you guys have a great day. Be blessed and less stress. Shazzy Speaks.